Hello and welcome to this video and in this video I want to talk about GitOps. Now before I begin I want to quickly say that GitOps is not something super new. Like all of these terms that exist today such as DevOps and GitOps and infrastructure as code and all of these methodologies existed in some way or the other in the past maybe even for a decade and it's just that it's been there in different forms, done by different people in different ways. And you probably already do this in your work and just didn't realize it's called DevOps or GitOps. So the name GitOps was only coined recently. However, the practices have been followed by many years in different ways. So what is GitOps? So GitOps takes DevOps practices and applies them to infrastructure automation. So let's understand each of these first. Now DevOps practices, as you probably already know, is when developing applications, developers collaborate via version control tools like Git. So you store your code uh, to Git repositories and every time you have updates, you push your code and every time you have to get the latest code, you pull your code and then you send merge requests or pull requests to get your changes into the master branch. And there is approval processes there and once merged with uh, CI/CD tools like Jenkins or GitHub Actions or GitLab CI CD, the changes are automatically built and then automatically tested and then automatically pushed to production environments. Now, let's come to uh, the second part, which is about infrastructure automation. So let's say we have a task and that task is to provision a server in the cloud. So install an Ubuntu operating system on it and then install an Nginx server and then install the application that the devs have worked on. Now in the manual way of doing things, a sysadmin or a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer would go to the console of the cloud platform, select the appropriate server and operating system. And then once it's up, you connect to the server through the terminal and then run some commands, let's say to install the Nginx server and then configure the Nginx server and then configure the application. So that's easy, right? But what if we are asked to do this hundreds of times or even thousands of times? And what if we were able to complete this the manual way eventually, but suddenly the requirements have changed. Like instead of an Nginx server, we are now asked to replace it with Apache server. Now it then becomes complicated and tedious and repetitive. Now this is where IAC or infrastructure as code comes in. With infrastructure as code, you can now create a file, say in Terraform, to provision hundreds of servers, and then say with tools like Ansible, automate the configuration of these servers by installing and setting up software on them. And let's say if you were using Kubernetes, then you use Kubernetes manifest files to define the state of the application running on these servers. Now, there are some concerns here. The admin will need to run or execute these files manually in order for the changes to take effect in the infrastructure. So we need to run the Terraform apply command to provision or update the servers. And we must run the Ansible run command to trigger the Ansible playbooks to automate the provisioning or the configuration of the servers and the kubectl apply command to deploy applications on the Kubernetes cluster. Now this is similar to manually building binaries from your code if you were a software developer and then manually pushing it to a server and then getting it deployed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with DevOps, the software development side has progressed towards only requiring a developer to push changes to Git and then everything else to uh, pushing on production is automated. Now, because infrastructure as code is stored as code, this can also be stored in Git repositories. Now, multiple infrastructure admins can now work in parallel in developing manifest files for Terraform or Ansible or Kubernetes without stepping on each other's toes. And they can now send merge requests to get their code accepted into the main branch. And by applying DevOps practices to IAC, we can now set up a pipeline where the code is automatically applied to the target infrastructure. And that's what GitOps is. The idea is that you should be able to deploy changes to your infrastructure without having to directly modify it manually. So that means we also get the benefits of Git workflow, such as version control, uh, traceability and security through uh, merge request approvals. The second benefit is that uh, the automated pipelines from the DevOps practice, we can now configure our infrastructure to trigger deployment events whenever a valid commit has been pushed to the Git repository. And there are two kinds of deployment strategies in GitOps. There is a push-based strategy and there is pull-based deployment strategy. Now, both of these strategies define the behavior of how your infrastructure react to changes in the repository. Now, with push deployment, when someone makes changes and pushes it to the Git repository, 
the repository's pipeline reacts and triggers a series of commands to push the updated changes to the infrastructure. In pull deployment, we basically instruct our infrastructure to be in a constant lookout for any changes to a repository. If someone makes changes and pushes it to the repository, the infrastructure will be able to pull the latest updates and apply the changes internally. One of the tools that implement this mechanism is Argo CD. With Argo CD, we add an agent into the infrastructure that connects to the Git repo and continuously pull for changes. And when it detects changes, it pulls the latest changes and applies them to the infrastructure and it always ensures that the state defined in the Git repository is the same as the state in the infrastructure. For example, if someone were to manually make a change in the infrastructure, Argo CD will detect that there was a change made and that there is now a difference between what is in Git repo versus what is in the actual infrastructure. And Argo CD is intelligent enough to revert those changes to make sure whatever state the infrastructure is in is the same as that defined in code in the Git repository. And that makes Git as the single source of truth. GitOps ensures that the Git repository is the single source of truth when it comes to the state of the infrastructure. So now that we have understood how GitOps work, now let's talk about its advantages. Now, incorporating the Git workflow to your infrastructure makes it more secure and reliable. So every change you do in your infrastructure can be traced easily thanks to versioning. And you can configure the approval workflow so that only authorized personnel can review and make changes. You won't be afraid of simple mistakes or errors since you can easily roll back to a previous version. And the process of your entire infrastructure becomes easier to manage. Now, what's great about GitOps is that it's not that complex to implement since the majority of IT companies are already using Git in one way or the other. You probably already have infrastructure as code in place. So it's just a matter of extending the implementation on your infrastructure. So how can you get started with your GitOps learning journey? Now, first, of course, you must have knowledge of Git because all the code is stored in Git. So we have a hands-on course for that here. And this is a story-based uh, interactive course where you can learn Git by doing. Secondly, you must have knowledge of automation or infrastructure as code tools such as Terraform or Ansible. Now check out these beginner level courses for those. And again, comes with hands-on labs. And third, learn GitOps tools themselves, such as Flux or Argo CD. Now we recently launched a course on Argo CD with hands-on labs, and you can find that here. And if you have any questions, um, don't forget to leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel uh, for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.